Hi everyone, Steve here, and I'm just going to use this time to really introduce you to the course True Lies, really work through what we're going to be looking at, um, to the, the main sort of focus of the courses, um, not necessarily the films that we'll be looking at, that will be in a different, um, in a different mini lecture, uh, which you can also listen to. This is really just to set up the particular themes of the course um, in True Lies Documentary Studies. The, the, the thing to be aware of right from the start is you're not going to end this course an expert on documentary filmmaking or documentary films. That, that would be an impossible ask um, over just 12 weeks that we have together. It's really about setting up some particular ideas of documentary filmmaking, um, really around this theme of ethics and ethical documentary films that I'm really interested in. And what I'm hoping you will do for sort of following this course and outside of this course is start to think a little, a little uh, more critically about the films that you're watching and certainly the documentaries that you're watching and really questioning actually what's going on screen, why is the film being composed in a particular way and constructed in a particular way to persuade you of a particular argument. And also, I really want you to think of yourself as a critical um, social citizen and someone who is an ethical film watcher. And the way that films are, specifically documentaries, are encouraging you to behave and act in a different sort of way. Um, before I go on, if you're a Facebooker, uh, there is a there is a True Lies Facebook page, which is called True Lies. So if you want to join, um, you're more than welcome. I'm not the administrator of this Facebook group, but I will be putting up some stuff, um, sort of kind of links to articles and things that I see across sort of the next couple of months, which I think would be um, in regard to a number of the conversations that we're having and a number of the films that we've been looking at. So if you're a Facebooker, True Lies is the place to go. There'll be nothing you know, directly about the course, you know, in regard to assignments or anything like that. Um, but if you're interested in sort of continuing the conversations that we're beginning in these uh, lectures and in the tutorials, then please join. Okay, I'm really interested in this whole idea of, what well, is the name of the course, True Lies. Like, what does that actually mean? It's a bit of a paradox. What is a true lie? And the fact is that True Lies, in a way, sets up really nicely what we wanted to do with this course, where we're looking at every documentary as a sense of storytelling, as a sense of history telling, as a sense of placing you in a particular context. But at the same time, the film is manipulating you to think in a certain way. It's manipulating the social actors, the social actors being real people um, who would appear in a documentary. So they're still real people, but they're actually playing a certain role and they're, they're re referred to in documentary studies as social actors. So I'm really interested in these ideas of the truth and the lie that's at work in every documentary and why facts are suppressed in the ways that they are. And despite that documentaries having a social role and a social responsibility, they're, by and large, entertainment devices, and they're there to entertain and to compel you and to bring you into their narrative. So that's what a documentary is trying to do. It's trying to tell you the truth of the story. It's trying to tell you an accurate depiction of the story, as accurate as would be seen by the filmmaker, but at the same time, it's trying to educate you and entertain you, which is you know two kind of paradoxes that a film is also trying to educate and entertain. So the course is really interested in the themes of truth, lies, and ethics, and how ethics kind of sits between truth and lies. So the aims of the course is to promote an understanding and awareness of the definitions of ethics. How do we actually define cinema ethics? In your other... Um, courses that you're doing across your university degree, you might be looking at ethics, but you might be looking at ethics from a journalistic point of view or a writerly point of view. But it's very, very hard to 
define ethics that are appearing on the screen and actually what's going on the screen. And cinema has a particular way of thinking about ethics and dealing with ethics, and that's something that I'm really interested in looking at. Persuasive techniques. What you, persuasive techniques are the fil is the filmmaker using to convince you of a, of a particular way of thinking of this subject? And also, what is the relationship between the producer, those who are making the film, the text, the film that is made, and the audience? All right? The audience, you're never a passive consumer as an audience member. You're always there asked to engage in the film in a particular way. If you've seen Making a Murderer, which was on Netflix last year, which was about um, someone who was accused of a crime and is in jail for a crime, and the film was trying to convince you that this person is innocent of the crime. They suppress particular facts. They did things to convince you of that. But as an audience member, they were encouraging you to really begin a groundswell to try and force a, a new trial for this person. Um, something like the podcast Serial was doing a very similar thing. And a, a new trial has actually been announced um, based on that because of the audience response. The outcomes. To produce a comparative an analysis of different types of ethical documentary. Right? What we're really interested in is looking at all of the films across this course. So we may play a film one week, but that's not the only time we're going to be talking about that film. We will be returning to that film across the course. And it's really important that you watch all of the films, that you come to all of the screenings, that you engage with all the screenings. I'm really interested in how you are responding to the film in a cinema situation and how other students are responding to that. You watch a film differently when you're in the company of others. You may not think you do, but you do. And you have a deeper, richer understanding of that. Another outcome is to provide a critical reading of documentary techniques. How do we actually understand and define particular techniques that a documentary filmmaker is using and the way that they're borrowing from fiction filmmaking um, as much as the, the own sort of canon of documentary of the documentary genre. And also, I'm looking at to apply documentary films to a broader social and commercial context. And what I'm interested in that is the way that you can take particular ideas and themes and arguments and social situations and political ideologies and apply them to things beyond just the films themselves. These films are speaking to you as social citizens. They're speaking to you as members of a democratic society and they're asking you to behave and respond in a particular way. So Bill, <coughs> Bill Nichols is someone that we'll keep referring to across the course. Bill Nichols is extremely influential in documentary studies, in documentary teaching, and also I would argue he's had a huge impact in just the way that documentary filmmakers are actually constructing their own films. He has come up with five different modes of documentary. Now, <clears throat> although um, these modes are very important and they're this is very accurate the way that he, he breaks down these five modes, even Bill Nichols now is questioning the modes because what happened traditionally was that um, each, mo each film was applied to one particular mode, like this is a reflexive documentary or this is an observational documentary. But the fact is, and what I'm really wanting to question, is that a film could incorporate two or three or four different modes um, from Bill Nichols' um, sort of definitions here. So it doesn't have to be as prescriptive as just being applied to one mode. And I'll be talking more about that when we're in the weeks when we're actually unpacking Bill Nichols' modes. These modes are important to understand and to be able to define. Um, you'll be asked in um, the assessments two and three to actually be referring to these modes and thinking about these modes. But um, just so we're clear, I'm really interested in you as challenging these modes as much as applying them um, in a sort of traditional sense or faithful sense to the films that we'll be discussing. So the focus is documentary and ethics, and I'm really interested in the relationship of the filmmaker to the participants, so the concept of consent. 
when does a social actor give consent to the filmmaker? Right, the, I'm, I, I, the the relationship of the filmmaker to the film. So the copyright, the issues of copyright, the way that a filmmaker comes in and tells the story of someone, the true story, and exposes them in a particular way. Yet the documentary filmmaker has no responsibility beyond their own moral agenda. They can exploit the subject however they want. And a lot of the time, the social actor doesn't even profit on a financial sense from the film. Even the documentaries where, and you know, a very um, you know, you know, an, an, an individual of a community who has no celebrity becomes a huge social celebrity because of it, but they don't profit financially from the film. And I'm really interested in questions around ethics and copyright and the responsibility of the filmmaker when they are benefiting from the subject and their career is benef benefiting from the subject. So those ideas are always at work in this film. The idea of when celebrities are being um, documented and the difference to when um, you know, more ordinary citizens of the community are being uh, documented. So the questions to consider um, across the course is what counts as ethical forms of representation? What is an ethical form of representation? And what does that even mean, an ethical form of representation? It talks about the filmmaker, it talks about the social actor, it talks about the subject, but it, it more than anything, it talks about the audience. That the films are being made for an audience and a filmmaker is trying to tap in to the, the ethical ideology of the people who are watching it. Right? If you look at a Mike Moore film, Mike Moore is extremely left-wing in his views and his agendas, and that is who he is appealing to. That's who he's making films for. You could challenge somebody like Michael Moore and say, well, yes, you may be ethical in what you're saying to one regard, but at the same time, why are you suppressing facts? Why are you fudging facts? Why are you making up facts? When really, people on the other side, on the more right-wing side, would be dismissing the film because of that. And is that actually ethical to be changing facts just to convince somebody of a particular argument? How can a documentary persuade someone to think differently about an event, a place, a person? And that's really what we're going to be looking at in the techniques that a filmmaker uses and the, the questions that they put forward um, when they're making a film and again the suppression of facts which is really important. What is the context in which the documentary is being interpreted? What other information is there about the subject in society? Who is behind the documentary? Who is the audience? So when we're looking at uh, some of the films, right, we know about these people. We know about this subject and I think that's really important because Often a documentary is saying, hey, you know that you thought you knew all about that subject or all about that person? Well, we're going to show you a different side to that. But they want you to go into the documentary with a particular understanding of that. And that, again, is really interesting, the way that a film is doing that, the way a film is asking you to think a little bit differently on um, you know, what's actually going on with this subject in a more in a broader social context and what will be the effect on audiences if they are persuaded if you're if you're persuaded like by a film like born into brothels how are you going to act differently and what is the film asking you to do to act differently and i think that again is a very important question so an underlying uh, focus of this course is the real people of social actors what happens when a real person signs away their rights to become a social actor? Right? And I'm, I'm sort of separating that, a real person to a social actor. The real person is, is you and I, right? but the social actor is someone who's performing an idea of themselves on screen. So you could break this down and say, well, when I'm on Facebook or Twitter, I'm actually a social actor because I'm, I'm performing an idea of myself. And Facebook 
actually have control of that. Facebook can do what they want of all of this content that we're putting on social media for free. And I think those sorts of issues will be discussed and fleshed out across the course. Um, you know, in the way that things have been become very blurred now between, uh, you know, the documentary and the audience, that the audience now are producers as much as consumers. So unlike journalist documentary filmmaking does not have a code of conduct or set of ethical standards that governs all filmmakers. So the filmmaker can do whatever they want because there is no set of ethical standards amongst the film community. There is for, say, journalists. So that becomes very questionable, again, as to how do we believe what is going on on the screen is done in an ethical manner. Now, this course will explore some principles for how filmmakers interact with their subjects, right? So what happens when filmmakers reject the principle of showing ethical responsibility for their subjects? What happens when they just don't show that? And what ramifications does that have for the social actors and for the audience members? And also, what happens when filmmakers do not approach their subject with a critical perspective? Now, we always want filmmakers to be ethical and to respect their subject. But what if the subject doesn't deserve to be respected? And what happens if they don't? There was recently a documentary on the Stooges, the, the rock band from the 60s, Iggy Pop's rock band. Um, and Jim Jamoosh, he did it like a fan, kind of, you know, a, a sort of a fan essay. And there was nothing critical about it. And for that reason, it's actually a little bit boring because you don't actually get a critical sense of the subject. He never once challenges them or questions them. Now, that's just for a rock band, but if someone was doing a documentary on, say, Donald Trump, and they had access to Donald Trump, and they weren't really challenging his views on women and his views on race and particular things he said, would that actually be an ethical documentary? Even though the filmmaker, you could argue, was paying complete respect to the subject. So it's, it's sort of this it's balancing act between what is an ethical um, film, but more importantly, who is the documentary ethical for? Is it for the audience? Are they being ethical for the audience? Are they being ethical for the subject? Are they being ethical for themselves? And we'll really be looking at that and unpacking that um, across the course. And just finally, there's two key readings. Every week we have readings, which we all expect you have done by the time you get to the tutorials. But there are two key readings that I want you to have a read of. Um, the Bill Nichols one is uh, Bill Nichols uh, is speaking truths with film, right? Which is a really excellent chapter containing a number of little mini kind of essays in there, um, and he really just talks to what we're looking at in this course, and also. Honest Truth, Documentary Filmmakers on Ethical Change, which was a study done by um, some academics where they actually went and they interviewed a series of filmmakers on the whole idea of ethical filmmaking and how things have changed and how filmmakers are, one, trying to tell a story and at the same time manipulate their audience of a particular way of thinking, but also trying to be honest and truthful in doing that. And the fact is that to make an argument, any argument, requires a particular look at facts and a particular um, suppression of other facts. Okay, so that's the course very, very generally. Um, so we'll be looking at a whole bunch of different things, but mostly it's really about ethical filmmaking. What does ethics actually mean? How do we represent that? And the responsibility that the filmmaker has to the social actor and also what role the, the audience member has within all of this. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, speak to you soon.